Welcome to the Lazy Bardcast. I'm David Williams, the dungeon master for our ongoing adventure. And today we have an awesome new banner hanging in our brand new studio. His name is Eric Professionals. <laughs> That's what we are. My name is Kyle Paquin, and I'm playing Talgroff, the dwarf paladin. Fun fact for y'all I learned today that Talgroff, spelled with an A, is actually a Finnish software company. Okay. Huh. I'm Kyle Dell, and I'm playing Captain Korvac, the Undying Messiah, and I'm staring directly into the camera right now. It's not even on. I'm just pointing it at you. My name's Sean Luke. I'm playing Mervyn the Monolith Smolderbeard. Smolderbeard. <laughs> Every time. Smolderbeard. The best there is, the best there was, and the best there ever will be. My name is Josh Yarnell. I play Orion Goodbarrel, a halfling bard who's, uh... <laughs> Uh, if you like what you hear <laughs> keep it look us up at the lazy bardcast where things are found for all other things lazy check out www.lazybardcast.com where you can find links to our episodes player backstories patreon rewards and more previously <laughs> oh boy previously <laughs> Orion and Talgroff being accosted aboard the Ocean Splendor. Well, not so much accosted as just being asked where Maven might be. You struck the authorities who were asking such said questions and began a siege upon Gunderloon in which Maven, after a strange encounter with his god yet again, reappeared in a sunlit beam, began sprinting through the city. Korvac sitting on the side playing some cards with his duplicates because he doesn't want to get involved with this. And we pick up with a flock of... A flock? Sure. <laughs> of bats making their way down from the ruined castle of Old Grave Red Axe where Korvac was told some vampires had taken hold. And the vampires emanated on the beachhead, Larry leading... Hey guys, it's great to see all of you. It's been a while. Some of the mage hunters now standing by, bleeding, holding their wounds. They're blinded too. And and blinded, thank you for reminding me. Stumbling around, half crawling on the ground. Well, uh, if you want to meet us in the castle, we don't we don't really want anything to do with the mage hunters. So Now Orion said that there was a goblin fella named Oak here. Have you seen him, Larry? Ook's, Ook's around. He should be up in the castle somewhere. Oi. Oh, boy. Well, uh, looks like you got this handled. Uh, we'll come see you in a, once we take care of things here. Larry and the vampire's out. <laughs> and he, the most casual what? conversation in the middle of this battlefield? <laughs> they turn into bats and fly back up to the castle. He's like, hold on. Pause. <laughs> hey, Larry, how's it going? The mage hunters on the ground. Oh, where are they? I can't see anything. Release me from these binds. And I cast Gias on one of them. You want to read what that does? <laughs> Wisdom saving throw, please. All right. Or five. Uh, five. Fail. So he must free me. If he cannot, he will take 5d10 psychic damage every day he does not free me. Okay. Oh my god. For 30 days. <laughs> That's like command with injury. All right. Uh, yeah, yeah I, I will. I just, I, I can't, I can't see. Uh, Don't make excuses. You uh, better fix it right uh, now. Okay. Marco, he starts patting the sand on the beach. <laughs> I am going to, uh, I still have four rounds of my animate objects. I'm going to slowly poke him in the back with my knives to get him to go the right direction towards me. <laughs> okay, Not you start prodding. Just if he goes the wrong direction, you <laughs> yeah. just poke him harder. You yeah. start prodding him. There's still one mage hunter kind of rolling around on I'm the ground. I'm gonna do something with him. Okay, After. sure. He begins palming his way across the sand, being poked and prodded by the nails and making his way to your feet. He gets to them and touches them and, oh, the stone binds. I, I think the only way to release these is in the prison. The only one that I know of at least. I, what can I do? He starts kind of pulling on the stone, trying to pull, How much do whatever he can. <laughs> you feel him tugging at your ankles, blindly just flailing around. We're in kind of loose initiative at this point. You can hear the sound of, you imagine another group of mage hunters getting closer, still ways off. Well, this isn't working. Do something else. <laughs> I'm, I'm trying. 
As he's reaching down at your feet, Orion, you tell him to try something else, and I don't know what else. Ah, ah, he starts <laughs> screaming as you watch his blood begin forming around like his forehead just begin dripping down his face before he just falls over on the ground dead. Oh, man. Don't worry. I'll try to get you out of these. I'll use my axe this time. I'm going to just try to, like, chomp on it at, with the, I guess, the pummel. Make an attack roll with disadvantage. 29. Yeah, you start chiseling at the stone around his foot, and since your weapon is now magical, as it has this boot on the bottom, it begins chipping away at it, and you get one of Orion's feet free. Nice. Also, I'm going to say you guys have about six rounds here, so you each have six actions to do what you will before more reinforcements come. Can I talk to the guy on the ground? Yeah. I'm going to kick away his weapon, okay. and I'll be like, do you know who you're talking to? Oh. It, it, Maven, it, yeah. it must be you. They they said that you slaughtered people without even trying. It, that's certainly what it feels like. Do you ever want to see me again? N no. Why don't you go tell your friends if they ever become an obstacle for me again, it'll be much worse. They're they're just going to send more. I'm not, I'm, I'm just a pawn. I just do what I'm told, but I'll, I'll tell them. You better try. Okay. And I'm just going to, push him in the direction of where there's more coming from. I'm going to attempt to intimidate him that way. This guy's blinded and bloodied, I'm sure. sure. Uh, you don't need to roll. Sure. He's, he's not doing great. He's blinded. You push him off. He kind of strips and stumbles and then picks himself up and starts. To, to, you run. We're all smart. You were you stand. He, he starts getting to a slow jog, kind of wiping away at his eyes. You imagine he's slowly getting his vision back as he's getting as he's beginning to run away and your spell slowly fades. Right. Anything else you guys want to do? Do you have any sevens? Go fit. <laughs> I just saw you had sevens last round. <laughs> As I dispel him, okay. the cards drop, and then I reap. Re <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you are me again. <laughs> All right, you're ten. <laughs> so, oh, well. do you guys want to see the vampires or deal with more mage hunters or... Uh... I'm up for either, honestly. They said Uka's in the castle. Don't you want to deal with him? I really don't want to see him, but we need to get Orion out of this stone so we can get out of here. Read him and weep. <laughs> <laughs> We're playing go fish. <laughs> Let's get you back to the ship and we'll try and chisel this off. I'll help him. Okay. <laughs> Oh my We're God. I'm going to carry Orion back sure, to the Sure, you ship. go to pick him up and you see that his foot is cemented to the ground as he is currently immobile. It seems a magical fixation to the earth okay. itself. I'm going to start working on his foot, too. With your magical weapons, you begin chiseling away at this, and within about a round or so, it does come free. Ryan, you still have a bound hand, but you're able to walk. Ha-ha! Freedom! Looking to the side, looking at the docks, you can see that the ocean is very violently rocking. Ships are smashing into each other. The docks are broken. Your ship definitely isn't attached to the docks anymore, as it's kind of just lazily moving a little bit to the very edge of its anchor before it kind of just pulls <laughs> just rocking around in the crashing waves at this point staying strong still there yeah let's uh get up to the castle i guess was that larry y yeah man i got a few questions for him yeah me too yeah i wonder how their show went that's that's not the question nah, that's I'm not the question ask. at all hmm. that's the last time i'm playing with you guys as I summon my illusions. Hey, Korvac! <laughs> We're going uh, to the castle. Come on. Looking over, what? you see Talgroff yelling this, standing over the corpses of a few mage hunters, and sand completely covered in blood. As I go to stand up, I'll kind of slam the cards on the ground, stand up, and as I walk away, it all dispels. Because okay. it was all just a minor illusion. Sure. Very frustrated from being cheated <laughs> by myself. Totally. Can I use the last bit of time I have with my animated objects to just kind of like bury themselves in the sand and then come up a little bit pointy end up? So like a trap? So like a trap. <laughs> yeah. Just uh, make a spellcasting ability check. 26. Cool. Cool. So you do so, and you see what you can see is just the very tips of nails that you know as soon as someone is to spring your trap, they will jut up into whatever is above them. Man, I hope no kids step on that. 
Can anyone do anything about my hand? Yeah, we can work on it when we get up there. About this time, you hear the steps of mage hunters approaching from down the street. Yeah. Are we, are we running, you guys? Yeah, yeah let's get out of here. Look at this Where walk. are we going? I was yelling at you. We're going to the castle. They said Ook's there. He's got my leg. Let's go then. Really? No, but uh, whatever. It's the only <laughs> explanation. How far are they in front None of us? Of behind you us? Know they're this. like they're out in front of you to the right, like rounding around a corner. Think like very Aladdin style, where you can see all the shadows on the building across the side, and off to the off to the other side, you can see the scattering of small homes with alleyways jutting up the hillside to the ruined castle. Let's go and and get this thing off me. Yeah, let's go. So you guys begin jutting down the alleyways, heading towards the direction of what was once King Olgrave Redaxe's ruined keep, now overrun by vampires. As you begin ma making your way up the hillside, you can hear the sounds of screaming behind you of, Oh my god, what happened here? <laughs> As they begin running, then, Ah, they're coming out of the sand! <laughs> As Ryan's nails are going off. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, we should probably run this. Something's going out of the sand. <laughs> <laughs> hey, do, do a couple more of those, maybe, out, out, away from the mic. <laughs> <laughs> My leg. <laughs> but um, anyway, you guys begin. <laughs> you guys begin making your way towards this ruined keep and winding your way through the streets. It's easy enough to find your way to the switchbacks going up the mountainside where you saw the vampires flying down from. Coming up to the top, you see a few guards stationed in front of the castle entryway, which is definitely not a grand castle by any stretch of the word, especially after coming from Waterdeep. We have trailers again? <laughs> <laughs> but standing in between these guards is Larry, who is meeting you here. Hey, well, thanks for joining us. Where is Ook? Well, I'm not sure. You're gonna have to ask, uh, gonna have to ask the dragon. And he'll probably let you know. There's a lot of people here that you probably know. Where would I find said dragon? Uh, inside. I can introduce you. He's he's nice. How are you here? Well, a lot has happened since Under Mountain and everything there. We gave up on acting. We're start no. we're starting a band. Yeah, uh, we, yeah, we don't care about uh, that. Where's well, this dragon? Larry and the I, vampires. Oh, I like it. Yeah, thanks. Give well, me a ticket to your first show. I can take you show. to him, but I can, he'll explain everything. I can help explain a little bit, but I don't really understand a, a lot of it. Okay, go so, on. Uh, well, do you want to come inside? Yeah, hey. boy, don't. Yeah, I've never on. seen a dragon. Oh. Do the mage hunters know you're here? Well, I have an idea. Let's ask the dragon. Sure. Oh, yeah. All right. Yeah. Sounds good. <laughs> a dragon. Yeah. Um, there's gonna be a moment. Never met one myself. I couldn't help but notice we're still outside. Oh yeah, we can go inside. And he turns around <laughs> and begins making his way it's inside like six the times castle. <laughs> yeah, but it was funnier each time. As he opens up the door, you can hear shrieks and yells from inside as there are various people inside cages uh, hanging from the ceiling with like their limbs hanging out. And Larry, as he's walking in, oh, don't worry. It's just like vampires got to keep up appearances. They're all paid actors. And he, oh. he looks up at one and gives him a thumbs up, and the guy, like, breaks his <laughs> acting for a minute. I look, I look at each one in, individually, and I'm like, it's not you. It one's not you, either. No, I, no. well, I, I won't show you Ook, but he will. That guy up there. It, no, well, no, not him. The dragon. So you guys wanted to kind of know about this place. Do you want to know where we are? You want a tour, or do you yeah. just want to meet the dragon? I think we'll just meet the dragon. I think we sort of know where we are. Okay. We maybe been... have to. I've never been in a castle. We've been here before. Well, I've been here before. Well, that's all right. It's not very big. I'll just give a brief tour on the way. To the right, you can sleep. Left, you can eat. Here's the throne room. Oh, that was so <laughs> cool. The rest of it got washed into the waves. Inside of this room in front of you, you can see to the left a staircase that you imagine heads to a lower basement area. A number of guards flank a throne made of nicely woven bags. And atop this throne is a dragonoid individual. He looks very human in his appearance aside from various dragon scales that... Been glued to his face? <laughs> not glued, but they're... <laughs> 
like patchy along his skin this very <laughs> these very dark black scales that almost like form within his own skin you can see that they go inside of his body and the white of his skin is penetrated by the darkness behind it he looks definitely menacing at first sight aside from his short blonde hair behind him he has a shelf with a number of vases on top of the shelf the vases underneath of them have small name plates across each each vase has its own little name plate one of which you do see says ook as larry's walking up he well these are our friends that i was telling you about that ook mentioned before you killed him again that <laughs> he uh there they were on their way and that they're probably the ones that can help you they're the ones that you've been hearing so much about the guy on the throne holds up a hand to larry and stop please stop wait larry you said we were gonna meet a dragon the individual on the throne looks at larry for a moment and you told them great well i'm glad that you've made it aside from alerting the entire force of mage hunters here of your presence yeah but like half of them are gone now that's great you killed half of the force on Gunderloon. Yeah, we just got here. The rest of them will now be hunting you with airships and... That's fine. Ooh. Much more. Do I have airships? Yeah, that means we get an airship soon. I've never been on an airship. Well, this adventure is amazing. This is an adventure to you. Hmm. Yeah, life's an adventure. I look at Larry. This is a dragon to you. Okay, Mr. Dragon... Where is Ook? This is why you've brought them here, Larry. No, this is why I came here. Ook is my jester and a lich by random coincidence. (laughs) He'll be back in a day or so. How many vases are there? You see eight. Can I see any of the other names? Yeah, looking over them, there are various goblin names. (laughs) Okay. I thought. Click, 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 yeah, click. that's what I thought. That's what I thought was going to happen. No, you you don't recognize any of your any of the names on any of the other plaques. No, Mr. Red? Did, did no. he just say that? Lo- yeah, they, yeah like... he said that. Yeah, gesture. That's crazy. No, no that's no. not what I was Again, focused on. I mean, I thought he was that... pretty funny, but a whole career. What are you searching for Ook for? I believe that's my business, Mr. Dragon. You were just saying it earlier. It's not like it's a secret. Do you see his leg? Tell go. T- <laughs> I'm going to turn him around. Oh, I think I've got this under control. Ook, please. As I turn around. (laughs) As you turn around, you see his now growing impatient face. I noticed your leg when you walked in. Great, Taugroff. Now everybody knows. (laughs) The magic doesn't work on Verdon for some reason. I've yet to figure that out. What magic are you talking about? I'm sure you've seen it. I wouldn't want to share any of your secrets. You seem like... You'd like to keep it close to your chest. I am not even talking about magic. I'm Wonderful. talking about Ook. He'll be back tomorrow. O- okay, so sounds like you were almost waiting for us. What, what did you have to tell us? Well, Larry said that you would be useful, but you hardly seem useful. You seem more like... What's Gestures. the word I'm looking for? <laughs> no, not a jester. Uh, Here's the thing. A problem. No, we get things done. It's just not pretty. I can respect that, I suppose. Could you prove your usefulness in an answering of one question? Yeah, it is. What do you know of that is east? The monsters. Like a, I don't know, like a town or something? Like a city thing? Or more uh, trees? Forest? It's like this place, but more east. See, this is the uselessness I was speaking of. Are you talking about, like, Ask Carl or something? Well, you Ask should... Carl, so thank you. You should have asked him about it a week ago. They wouldn't shut up about it. So it was in your head. Not mine. Would you mind having my doctor take a look at each of you? I believe he can remove it permanently. I have had enough doctors removing anything permanently, might I say. He removed it from me. Is that why you're not a dragon? Mm. I mean... I'm not a dragon because I would not fit inside of this castle. When I fled my plane, rather, when I fled this darkness from my home, I flew over water deep and headed east. When I got there, couldn't continue. What, what is your name? My name I will share when there are no longer any influenced parties in my presence. Hey, I don't blame you. I'm actually all for that. I don't, I don't mind doing that at all. 
Is it a cleric or do you have some other way to do it? Or? Larry, get Dr. Fish. I think we already went through this. Something about uh, weird stuff. Yeah, in Waterdeep, they did this too with the cleric. I don't know about a permanent solution, but... Uh... Dr. Fish cleared my head. Hopefully he can clear anything that might be fogging your own. Can he fix my hand too? I'll hit it really hard again. You hit it hard and it kind of shatters apart and you're, you can move your hand uh, around. <laughs> never mind. <laughs> about a minute goes by and a Sawajin enters the room. An eye patch over one eye and a name tag hanging from his neck that says Dr. F-S-S-H. Because there's no eye. <laughs> Dr. Fish. I love how much of a reach that was. <laughs> wow. Anyway. Wow. <laughs> I hope you, know, you put crickets in there. I was fully expecting somebody to walk in that looked just like like that one SpongeBob character that's <laughs> yeah. just a fish, like a sideways fish. and like a briefcase. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and be like, oh. <laughs> Meep. <laughs> no, Dr. Fish walks in. The Sawajin character. Which, this Sawajin looks different than the monstrous ones you've seen before. They, to Korvac and Maven, they look vaguely familiar. A more shredded form of these Sawajin, a very more street shark form of them. For those of you more familiar with street shark. <laughs> <laughs> the 1993 hit, Street Sharks. Yeah. All of these urns mm -hmm. that are definitely not vases are on this shelf. How tall is this shelf? It's about... 15 feet off the ground. Reachable. So With he's on glaze, a, maybe. a stared throne made of all these intricately woven bags, and then the shelf above him is like eight feet off of the ground there. Yeah. When you say that, are you saying it's like a throne that's a beanbag chair? Basically. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I was picturing. I was just like, what? Bag? You said nicely made bags, and I was like picturing Louis Vuittons and like <laughs> other things. Like, yeah, I mean, like, wow, think that, but like Forgotten Realms. Like the nicest bags any of you have ever seen. Oh. So they're bag of holdings. Dr. Fish walks up to you, Maven, first. Hit me, Doc. And he pulls out a very strange looking jar. Well, now hold on. What is that? I don't want to. Do I have to drink that? I don't no, want to drink that. You inhale. And he pops off the cork, and you see a lot of like wisping smoke come out. And he oh. goes up to it first, and he he just sniffs it, and you see it go into his nostrils. It's not poisonous. It doesn't affect you if nothing's happening. It's all right. Poison doesn't bother me. And I'll just take a huge drag out of it. You sniff it in deep, and you don't feel any different, Maven. It smells very acrid, almost like burning your nostrils as it's going down, but it settles uncomfortably, and you just kind of cough. I'm going to act like it's smoke. So I'll be like, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> okay. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> okay. Sure. I guess you're clear. Next, he goes over to Ryan. Oh, good, a child. Sniff. <laughs> he, well, I know he I'm clear. In your direction. And I take a big old sniff. As it hits your nostrils, Orion, you almost get the instantaneous feeling like you're just going to vomit. And the rest of you watch as his eyes begin to get darker and darker before this smoky essence begins to form and make its way out of his face and then move quickly into the room, into the shadows. Orion, you remember all the conversations that you had with this creature. You remember hearing its voice inside of the Warrens inside of Waterdeep, okay. and you remember it conversing with you underneath the water, the different creature. Okay. And you remember all the words of the conversations, what it was trying to tell you, every bit of it. Oh, that was inside of you. And well, get it back. Orion, you like <laughs> drop to the ground. You take a level of exhaustion. Oh, okay. oh, but you are no longer permanently charmed by this creature. I will erase that. Now from you can RP your exhaustion, Kyle. Sheet. Oh, I don't want any well, of that. That's one. Tallgraf. Yeah, you got I don't know your name. <laughs> <laughs> that's Tallgrass. Dwarf. What? Sniff. <laughs> now you're right. it. I just hope that doesn't freaking happen to my face. Here we go. As soon as you sniff in, it immediately starts happening to your face. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> as Tallgraf, the same exact thing happens no, to you. No. And and then all those memories come flooding back, all the conversations that you had and the direction that this creature tried to give you. Two. Two for three. Next. No, I don't want any of that. Last time my doctor touched me, I lost something very important to me. But this, it, it helped me remember stuff. Maybe it'll help you remember where your leg is. Yeah, but Mr. Not-So-Dragon-Dragon-Man also said the magic doesn't work on me as a Vidin. 
Sure, sounds good. The Sawajin puts a cork on the bottle. And Wait. Let me know if you need me. And he starts walking off. Whoa, the, what? The, the dragon sitting, quote unquote, dragon sitting on the throne. Wonderful. So three for four. The fourth one, if you wouldn't mind just leaving. I can't trust you. Just inhale it. Everyone, you just everyone's said it the, wouldn't work on me. I'm not holding you hostage. No, the magic in your leg will not work on you for whatever reason. The, all you amalgamated types, most of you are controlled. What did you call me? Amalgamated, your leg built by whatever creature. What? What's going on did with you? Did you just call me amalgamated? He did. <laughs> I don't think it means what you think it means, though. It's hardly an insult, and you may be on your way. I won't hold you. I just don't want you in my presence. Whoa. All right. <laughs> well, let's go, crew. Wait. Just did you not see what just came out of them? Can you? Are they like passed out? No, they're they're good. Both of you take a point of exhaustion, though. Are they just on the ground like? <sighs> yeah, they're like panting and then begin sitting up. Look, you you remember coherently everything that happened. Look, Dang. they're fine. Just whoo. I look. I think you should just do it. I don't Man. feel good. We need to go east. No. No. <laughs> Yeah, the shield's there. Really? No, yeah. it's, it's not. Yeah, see? The shield lies atop the corrupted city. The corrupted city's ask Carl. Wait, what are you talking about? Why does what Carl the, know? What the, the, the thing he told me. I remember. Oh, yeah, I remember now, too. <laughs> <laughs> the memories are coming back. Wow, that, <laughs> that, my head's clearing. <laughs> that dwarven memory will always get to on it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> wait a minute. Was that... Okay, now look, oh, let's, uh, let's hold on for a second. I'm, I'm remembering. Dr. But, Fish, come back here. I'm not really remembering <laughs> everything. <laughs> look, Fish, come back. Was that something you told me or something that the creature told us? It's something look, that the creature told me. I'm not one to push medications on I people am. who Give don't want to take it. Korvac, why not? I don't think you guys understand. And if you won't follow, then I guess I will go alone. Yeah, Korvac, you begin walking down the uh, various figures in the cages hanging from the walls as you're walking by, now understanding that you're guests, not random people coming in to be threatened by the dragon. They just, bye. Uh, <laughs> it was nice. Hope you enjoyed your visit. Yes. Can you at least fill us in on what's going on with his legs? I have no idea what that's about. Mm, it's not that big of a deal. Someone's raising an army. It's a long story, which... I suppose I could shed more light on. Uh, yeah, that, yeah. Is it Triller? Triller. Why no. the hell would it be Triller? <laughs> <Is> that idiot? <laughs> no, it's not Triller. That man is a s low level scammer at best. Oh, yeah, he couldn't know. even keep the reins on Ook. Who can keep the reins on Ook? That guy is like slippery. I mean, he, he holds up his hand and motions to the jar behind him. It's not that hard he has him on to display. wrestle a jester. You have that many jesters? Or I just don't know. the one? He's. My most recent acquisition. I think we should go talk to Korvac, though. Yeah, I'll f figure it out. Get him to smell the roses or whatever's in there. Anyway, it was a pleasure meeting all of you. Oh, hey, Mr. Dragon. Yes. Where'd my little shadow thing go? Your shadow thing? I don't know. Huh. There's not like another little Orion running around somewhere? Maybe. I haven't really thought of that. I hope I meet him. I, I really hope I don't. don't. Yeah, I don't. I hope I don't. <laughs> I'm going to go to the front door sure. and summon one of my illusions, okay. and I'm going to talk to myself about my feelings. Okay. So, yeah, you step outside the castle like, gates, and there's two guards on either side, but they don't seem to be paying you too much mind. I don't think they understand. You see, I died. Not only that, I died from my friends. Which I killed, but that's besides the point. And the last time I saw a doctor, I woke up without a leg. A leg that presumably might want to kill me or something. I'm not really sure. I don't really know who I can trust. What do you think? Me? I think that you have a really good point there. <laughs> Honestly. I mean, if I was you, which I am. <laughs> I'll go back in there and say, hey, I'm not going to do this thing, you know? You guys could both just take that inspiration. That was pretty dang good <laughs> both, right both there. You, both of you can take it. Very corpac. Very not what I was going to do. <laughs> <laughs> the problem is, as I said, 
I don't really know who to trust. And just because something that says he's a dragon who... I didn't see any wings. I don't know about you. The illusion just shakes its head no. <laughs> but I'm now just supposed to trust this guy because he's making me sniff something? I don't even think Maven would have done that normally. He didn't even want to go east, even though his captain said we should go east for reasons. <laughs> now all of a sudden I'm supposed to take his word over some mysterious gas. And now, I'm the bad guy, and my crew wouldn't even follow me over some non-dragon. I just don't know. I guess there's Korvac is talking to himself, I guess. Korvac, as they walk up. <clears throat> and poof, the I really away. love that you're narrating the camera going to the illusion <laughs> with no expression. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pi- I, I see the moment in my head. Yeah, that's amazing. I love that. Yeah, so all you guys exit the castle as you see Korvac remove one of his illusions. Down below, you can hear the screaming and see the searching parties of the mage hunters beginning to spread out out across the whole city, holding their torches. The docks are heavily manned by mage hunters. You can see them beginning to make their way onto your boat as well. Those of you who are outside Korvac, you can probably see it making, kind of glancing down at the docks. The whole city now is alive and moving so it sounded like that guy had a lot of information for us and we're just going to blindly trust him we'll even forget about the dragon for a second why not just clear your mind i mean do you guys want to say anything about how you're feeling now or do you just want to let our captain be they left some kind of hold on me after that conversation and i it's i think it's gone now i think they helped me i'm pretty sure laurel silverhand also helped us yeah, I think yeah. so too. Yeah, she did, for sure. But there was something left over. It's like this creature, whatever we came in contact with down in the Warrens, was like so powerful that it was able to keep something dark in within us. Now, how do you know that what you just sniffed made you think that? Well, didn't you see it? You saw it come out, right? I saw it. Well, also you the- mean this <laughs> is a minor illusion, the same exact effect? No, like this, and all my illusion the same effect. <laughs> and it looks exactly the same well, as each other. Also the, it's no, oh, this is Well, also politics. the fact that I was there and you guys were acting very different about the exact point that he's saying he remembers now. We were acting different until Laurel Silverhand helped us. Yeah, that same spell only gets rid of one effect at a time, so it sounds like this might have been more than one thing. Maybe. Oh, that's bad. Yeah. But it, it sounded bad. like... That in there was the dragon, the huge dragon. Yes, that we saw leaving. That we saw through the portal. Which is even more reason why I don't want to trust him saying, here, sniff this from some sour gene that comes out of nowhere says, I'm a doctor. And you're putting your whole crew at risk now by not inhaling that smoke. I'm putting my whole, you guys attacked an entire city and I'm the one putting everyone at risk. No, no, I was going to talk to them. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Orion and I noticed that they were searching for Maven like he was some sort of criminal. Yeah, they accused him of killing one of the mage hunters. Exactly. And we know that's not Maven, as we know him. He wouldn't just kill someone. I also don't actually think I killed the mage hunter. Yeah, I thought so. Screw these guys. No, I'm pretty sure none of us did, actually. So I had to kill them to make sure they couldn't (laughs) get Maven. Yeah, we were, we were trying to protect him because, I mean, we thought we had the jump on him. It turned out to be way more stronger than we thought. And guess what? I jumped in when I saw that you guys jumped in because that's how that works. Yeah. It worked out, sort of. We're here now. It's like people yelling about, I think he's over here. Do you guys hear him? <laughs> yeah, you just hear like a battlefield in the background. <laughs> They're still coming out of the sand! (laughs) (laughs) I have no reason to trust anything that's going on in there. The castle door opens and you see Larry's head peek out. Oh, hey guys, you're still here. Well, I just wanted to invite you. I'm a little bit embarrassed, but not very many people have been turning out for our shows. I don't know if you wanted to come and just... Yes. Watch some. Yes. You, you don't have to do the smoke thing. It's it's totally cool if you don't. 
No one's gonna force it on you. We're like free power in here. So you can just come to the show. Just, I got, I got permission from the guy that you guys can sleep over tonight. Sweet. I immediately pictured that scene in Hot Rod where he's just like, get out! <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go up to the door, and just before I open it, I'm just going to look back and say, Maven, when are you going to trust us for once? And then I'm going to go through the door and shut it. What a fool. He's putting everyone at risk. You guys haven't been dealing with this as long as us. And he's the captain, too. You've been fighting the black smoke a while? No. <laughs> These squid people that get into your heads. Right, because the, you know, you know. The dragon guy, as I get real quiet all of a sudden, he came through that purple portal. Maybe that was the squid's portal. He could be working with the people in the in the under mountain. He could also not like them and be against them. Yeah, well, how, do we, how are we supposed to know? D do I know as a spellcaster if I inhale something, if something is trying to take me over? You always know if the spell is unsuccessful. As you step inside, Korvac, you're immediately met by Larry, who's, like, anxiously standing behind the door. I'm walking right past you de him. You decided to come. He walks straight next to you as you're walking. Well, so there was a big collapse in the Underdark, and, you know, we had to kind of move locations, hire some new people for the band, and oh, where is it that you want to head, Korvac? I'm going right to the dragon. Okay. Yeah, you begin walking up, and after just a few moments, he's talking, oh, oh, oh okay. All right, well, I'll, uh, I'll meet you downstairs when you're ready for the sweet show. Larry and the vampires. <laughs> and he looks at you, expecting some kind of response. He's, like, walking down the staircase until he's, like, completely out of view. So you walk back in. Yes. I'll do your stupid trial. Fish, bring in the gas. The Sawajin begins walking by. The figure sitting atop this throne of bags, he stands up and stretches his back and you watch two wings unfurl from the back of him and show of good faith and he begins transforming into an adult dragon in front of you as now encompassing most of this room is this large dragon he begins speaking in a low guttural language before he forms enough words in common that you can understand Vishna many motions to his chest and then he begins transforming back into his humanoid shape. This is very recognizable as the dragon that flew over water deep. Just give me the gas. Sure, he uncorks it. Mistress done a lot to you kind of people. And he motions the bottle in front of your nose. As you begin taking a big inhale, the secret's dragon's piss. <laughs> as you take a huge <laughs> inhale uh -huh. of this gas. And you feel this same effect, Korvac, as it begins to push over you. And you remember being inside of the Warrens, staring down to this pit, hearing this voice. And then being assaulted by all these images and memories that never existed. That continued all the way to this moment when that charm is separated from your body. Great, another one. And he grabs the bottle from you as you're now almost reeling over on the ground. You do take a level of exhaustion, but you're no longer Nothing permanent. Nothing new. <laughs> <You're>, mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, for Korvac, he's used to it. Well, guess they're good. And he corks the bottle, starts walking down the hallway to the living quarters. I must say, I expected you to stick to your guns. I knew we need to use my battles. As any captain should. Do you wish your friends to know of what's happening with your leg? Or keep that between Captain and Dragon. I don't particularly care. Mistra's been raising an army for a century or so. An army of undead. Not something Mistra's known for, but there's a new god. One that I'll describe in front of your crew. I'm not fond of repeating myself. It doesn't bode well for a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I I keep my my gaze keeps uh, shifting from him to to this ook urn. Okay. Do you wish to know of the fool? He nods up to the urn. He holds power beyond his own imagination. 
Do you know he still does not know how to cast a single spell, yet he has hundreds at his disposal. All he yells is fireball, explosion, stands in the hallway all day every day talking to clay formations that he builds and things he thinks he can bring to life by yelling at them. It's entertaining. Sounds like a goblin. Exactly, and what good is a goblin if you can only kill him once? Are your friends joining us, or...? I don't really know what they're doing <laughs> anymore. <laughs> Meanwhile, outside. <laughs> yeah, you know, Talgraf, you make a good point. What if that dragon was the same one that flew out of that portal? Maybe Korvac's right. We gotta go tell him he's right, and we're sorry, and we're wrong. Of course, it's the same dragon. It's a black dragon that flew this way. Are you... Are you got, you're just figuring this out? No, I'm not. I'm saying that it might... It, if it came through a portal from the mine flares, then it might be working with them. Why would it not attack Waterdeep? But what about those other things that attacked us? Yeah, Were those sucked. from the portal? Why didn't the dragon attack it then? I don't know. I tried to walk dragons. Because are. it's not bad. Let's go ask him. All of you step back within the castle walls as you make your way back inside. And you hear the moaning and groaning of the various figures in the cages until they see the familiar faces, and then they stop and just kind of sit and chill again as you make your way to the throne room. Your friend has succumbed, it seems. No, Korvac! <laughs> <laughs> I'm Vizna, I'm black dragon from the far realm. How'd you get here? I was driven away. You're a dragon and you got driven from what? There is a new plane forming. With new plane formations come new gods. A new ring of hell. The tenth circle. A plane of darkness. A god of darkness. What? Wow. What? God of darkness. That's incredible. Keep going. He's a master manipulator, illusionist, deceitful, murderous. Holds no ties to most, and I believe the materials have come to call him Burn. <laughs> I was going to say his name's Ozzy. <laughs> the Prince I, of Darkness has ascended to I was going to go with Loki, maybe. <laughs> Mischievous. I think Murder. I've seen this god. This god is far more evil than others we've encountered. It seems he seeks nothing more than destruction and conquering. He's nearly taken the Far Realm, which previously thought impossible and he's set his sights on the material there's a barrier to the east can't pass unless you're undead oh but i believe i found a way around to the northeast from here i'm sure you passed it on your way a gathering storm if you head dun, 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 into the storm <laughs> oh he did it <laughs> if you head within the storm i believe there is a portal to his home plane Perhaps there's a way east there. So in the northeast, there's a portal to the east. They're using a shield as some sort of focusing iris. Really? <laughs> that could be any shield. It could be. I probably True. not, though. <laughs> I mean, I had a shield with a big eye on it. I earlier. believe you spoke of a shield atop a city. Yeah. That crawled. I've definitely seen that. The city that crawls is Ascarl. It is his home. It is his chariot, if you will, as he rides into battle. His amalgamations that he has taken from Mistra, I believe his first quarry in this fight of gods. So do you think he's on good terms or bad terms with this Mistra? I believe he has taken over at least the mind of Mistra, if not the body as well. Oh. Wasn't there, wasn't didn't we fight a golem that was guarding something for Mistra? Oh, yeah. He kept saying, like, Mistra's orders. I'm going to kill you. Wait, isn't this isn't this what the Mage Hunters... What was their flag to? Mistra. Okay. It was Mistra's symbol. There are many tied in this war at this point. The Illithid, the Drow, the Githyanki even. But I don't believe most of them understand the enemy they truly fight. So you're saying that the shield <laughs> is in this place... And this place is on the other plane. It appears your friend, your traveled acquaintance, has already told you its location. I don't, well, thank you to your smelling salts. I finally remembered that, but <laughs> this has given me a whole more sense of clarity. Boys, we found it. Well, not yet we haven't. Here's the catch. Oh, great. I am a dragon. I could travel and do such things. 
I do not risk to wish myself, and it seems some of you have ties greater than my own. But I'm a dragon, and what is a dragon without a horde? Motions to the throne he's sitting on of all the bags. Whatever I hold is yours. My paladin weapons, my gold, it's at your disposal. Head to the Eye of the Storm. Dragon Turtle's there. I'm sure you'll find a way around him. (laughs) (laughs) Right. So in the meantime, you you said you maybe have some weapons? Yes. He goes over to his bags. Wait, one more thing, actually. Well, he stands up and starts... He picks up a bag. Can Dr. Fish actually come to our ship... Oh, no one will be traveling to your ship, probably yourselves included. Can we bring I hope? Can we bring one person here then? Cuz I actually think there is one that is to the ship. One person from the ship to here. You wish to travel to your ship, swarmed by a city of mage hunters. We got through them once. Do as you will, I suppose. Um, do not come back here if you intend to go to your ship. Well, I mean, could you give us a ride to the storm? That could be arranged. Yes. So about those weapons, uh, what you got? He takes one of his bags and he turns it inside out and nothing falls out. And he looks at it and sets it to the ground. He begins like furiously going through bag after bag after bag until he unfolds one and a single piece of paper comes out and falls to the ground, which he picks up and he opens it frantically before just like a raging look on his face appears, he crumples it in his hands and throws it to the side and <sighs> I'll be back. And he turns and heads downstairs. I'm gonna read it. It says, Got him. It's just a single word on a piece of paper, but then it hits you. The hour or so that you spent in a small room going over lines and lines of contractual obligations of non-stop information of just CD dealership. This is Triller's handwriting on this piece of paper. And that's where we'll call the session for the night. Oh, <laughs> As it's seven. Thanks for listening to the latest installment of our game, Into the Storm Season 2. If you're arriving in the middle of the story, listen back to Season 1, The Dungeon of the Wacky Wizard, to discover our players' origins. Now, please take a moment to leave us a review on Apple Podcasts to let us know your opinion about this content. And be sure to subscribe so you won't miss any Lazy Bard releases. Now, if you want more, check out our Patreon for bonus content, including merch, blooper reels, a custom class, and voting rights to our one-shot games. See you next time on the Lazy Bardcast. By the way, Josh, uh, we need some moans and groans for that. Yeah. Each time. Uh. (laughs) (laughs) We will do some.